Hi everyone and thank you for joining me in this digital version of my talk. Um, for those of you who did make it to Vienna, I hope uh, you had a safe and good time um, and yeah, so that you don't have to miss my talk if you wanted to join. Um, here's the recording. Um, so we will be talking about stabilizing Chromium's valence support um, and in a bit more detail about implementing and testing fallback tap dragging, um, which I will explain in more detail later on, um, but just so that you aren't left wondering for half of the talk, um, it's a mechanism to drag tabs out of or between windows of Chromium that works on Wayland. Um, just a few sentences about me. Hi, I'm Max. Um, I work at Egalia, we are an open source consultancy, um, and I'm part of our Chromium team. Uh, also, I did try to design this talk so that you don't have to have any prior knowledge of Chromium um, or Wayland, so I hope that went well. Um, first, uh, the agenda for today, um, I want to start by giving some motivation, why do I care, why why should you maybe care um, about Chromium on Wayland. Um, and then, yeah, some details about Chromium on Wayland that you will need to know. And also after that, um, some stuff about Wayland, the Wayland protocol, protocol extensions, so that afterwards we can talk about tap dragging. Um, and then finally, um, we will also talk about testing uh, on Wayland um, using the example of Chromium tap dragging. So for the motivation, um, many distributions uh, use Wayland by default, have been doing so for a few years now, um, but only very few enable Chromium's Wayland support, which does exist. Um, Gentoo has a compile time option to use the Wayland support. Uh, Alpine Linux is, as far as I know, the only one um, that enables uh, the native Wayland backend by default. And all the other distributions uh, leave it as is, which means um, it will run via X Wayland. Um, so it seems uh, we haven't reached parity with X11 yet. Um, one of the things uh, that is noticeably broken on Wayland is tap dragging. Um, I have a video that I will show you later so that you can see for yourself what I mean by that. Um, but then let's let's take a look at the current state of Chromium on Wayland. Um, and just so that we're all on the same page, uh, Chromium is an open source browser, uh, which is the basis for Google Chrome, but also many other browsers, for example, Brave. Uh, it's also what Electron is built upon. So um, if you've used a desktop app, chances you've used uh, Electron and thus Chromium. Um, and so this is relevant for, for, for many things, not just uh, Google Chrome, the browser. Um, I want to start by just a little bit of details about Chromium's internal architecture. Um, this diagram uh, shows uh, a little bit of the platform support. So um, at the left in green, you have the Aura windowing system, um, which is sort of a replacement for GTK. Um, Chromium uses that on both Windows and Linux. Um, and Aura then uses for the lower level abstraction handling um, of input and graphics, uh, it uses Ozone. Um, and, uh, and there are different Ozone platforms that you can select at runtime. Um, the three listed here are the most relevant ones that live in upstream Chromium. X11 and Wayland um, are self-explanatory, I would say, and uh, DRM is only relevant for Chrome OS, uh, which is Google's Linux distribution that they ship uh, on Chromebooks. Um, so let's take a look at how Ozone Wayland has evolved over the years. Um, it was introduced in 2013 and more or less right off the bat, uh, Intel had a downstream fork 
that added a Wayland platform using Ozone. And then it took quite some time for Upstream to also add a different implementation of a Wayland platform, uh, which originally was only meant to be used for testing Chrome OS stuff on Linux. And this original Upstream implementation had a very different architecture to what Intel had developed. And also Intel had based their implementation on a Chromium internal framework, which had been deprecated in the meantime. So upstreaming their implementation would be quite non-trivial. Uh, nevertheless, we, uh, we being Egalia, started talking to Google about upstreaming in 2017 and actually began the upstreaming in 2018. Um, and that went quite well, I would say. And building on top of the existing Ozone Wayland support from 2020 until a few months ago, uh, we also had the Lacrosse project, which had the aim to make Chrome more stable on Chrome OS, also using Wayland. If you're interested in a longer version of this history or uh, in more details about Lacrosse, uh, a colleague of mine and I gave a talk with more details uh, that you can visit by clicking the link in the slides. So what is the current state of Chromium's Wayland support? Officially, it's still considered experimental, which means uh, you will need to enable it manually, either by passing the ozone platform equals Wayland command line flag, or by uh, passing ozone platform hint equals auto. And this ozone platform hint is also available if you go to chrome colon slash slash flags, and there you can set it permanently so that you don't have to pass a command line flag every time. Uh, for some highlights of things that work, screen sharing works uh, without audio, uh, although um, if you've used Wayland before, you may know that this is non-trivial under Wayland. Uh, we also have hardware acceleration support. We have fractional and per surface scaling. Uh, we have IME support, so used for mainly Korean, Chinese, and Japanese uh, input. Although I have to note regarding IME that there are still some issues on the Wayland level, so we are waiting for the Wayland folks to resolve them. And there's also still some ongoing development for so for the latest features, you may still need to pass a command line flag. Um, hopefully. Uh, we will be able to enable Ozone Wayland by default soon and make it not experimental anymore. Um, to help us with that, feel free to use it yourself. And if you find anything that doesn't work, please file a bug and we will take care of it. So let's move on to the next part um, and talk a bit about Wayland, about the Wayland protocol and protocol extensions. Um, I want to start by quoting from the official Wayland documentation. Uh, which describes Wayland as follows. It says, Wayland is the language that applications can use to talk to a display server in order to make themselves visible and get input from the user. Um, and two notes on terminology here. The Wayland server is usually called the compositor. Um, and then if I talk about a Wayland app or application or client, that is also referring to the same thing. Um, and Wayland is... Uh, as the official doc said, a protocol. Um, and there is a core protocol which defines the basic building blocks for clients to interact with the compositor. We have a few different interfaces. One of them is output, which is typically one monitor. We have a seat, which is a group of input devices. And those input devices are usually a pointer, so mouse input, touch, or keyboard input. Um, then we have interfaces for uh, surfaces and buffers to actually draw stuff to the screen, uh, some drag and drop related stuff, and that is mostly it already. Um, the usual flow is that the client connects to the server, and then the server advertises some global objects to the client, and then the client can decide whether it wants to bind those globals and interact with them, and interacting means uh, receiving events, sending requests, 
and also getting handles to interact with other objects. And just for the fun of it, uh, I included an excerpt of the protocol definition. The spec is written in XML, which then usually gets turned into C code by a program called Wayland Scanner. And this C code does the actual message sending and receiving for you. And this is just one request uh, that you use to start a drag and drop operation. So you can see we have description, we have the different arguments. Um, but there is a much more palatable form of this, at least I find it to be that way. If you go to wayland.app, uh, you can get a very nice rendered version of the protocol specification. And what you see here is the exact same request that you saw the XML for just now. And personally, I like that a lot more. So if you want to take a look at the Wayland protocol, feel free to browse through wayland.app. Let's talk a bit about what Wayland does differently from X11, uh, more in a developer-focused way, not, not really from an end user's perspective. Um, one of the big difference, uh, one of the big differences is that you don't get global coordinates. You only get so-called surface local coordinates, so relative to the origin of your surface. This is for mouse events and so on. And also, the compositor always controls the window position. You can't just say, I want my window to be positioned at these coordinates. I mean, first of all, you don't really know about the global coordinates. But also, if you, if you did, you couldn't tell the compositor where exactly you wanted your window. You can only say, hey, I just received a mouse event. And in response to that, I would like my window to move along with the mouse. But then the compositor takes over and does all the moving for you. Uh, so in general, you can say that there is a much more stronger per client isolation. And also clients have much less privileges than they did with X11, which of course requires new ways to implement certain things. Uh, I've mentioned screen sharing before. That works now, usually. Hotkeys can be difficult because you don't get keyword events if you don't have focus. And of course, as we will be talking about later, Chromium's tap dragging will also require some changes. But before we can talk about that, one more note on the Wayland protocol. As you may have noticed, the core protocol is very bare bones and not at all enough for everything you need to create a desktop experience. So there is the possibility to extend the protocol with protocol extensions, which means the compositor can expose additional global objects. Uh, the reason for this, according to the official docs again, is that it makes Wayland easier to develop, extend, and maintain, um, which may be true. Uh, but in practice, it means that you have a somewhat fractured ecosystem because Different compositors usually implement different extensions. And so one app that works perfectly fine on one compositor may not work at all on a different one, which can be frustrating for, for end users. Um, I, I've listed two examples of, of existing and widely used extensions implemented by pretty much every desktop compositor. First one is XDG Shell, which gives you the desktop style um, interfaces that you need for pop-ups, window title bars, and so on. And for all the graphics people, there's Linux DMA buff, which means you can have buffers based on the Linux kernel DMA buff mechanism. There's also the possibility to have private custom downstream extensions if you control both the client and the server. Uh, we'll see an example of that very, very soon. Um, because, of course, not only the server needs to have the definition for this protocol extension. The client needs to have it as well to be able to use it. Um, and for backwards compatibility, clients just ignore all the additional global objects that they don't have the definition for. So with all these prerequisites out of the way, let's talk about 
tap dragging. Um, and let's start by, by taking a look at how tap dragging usually looks using the example of Windows. So if you follow the mouse and the tabs, you can see that you can drag out a tab into a new window. Um, and this new window moves together with the mouse. Um, you can merge this new window with an existing window, or if you release it, um, it stays at the current position. Maybe, maybe let's take a, a second look. And in general, I, I find this to be quite smooth. Um, it may be a little bit over the top compared to what, for example, Firefox is doing, if you're familiar with that. Um, but it does look nice, I think. But the problem is um, that it doesn't really work as, as nicely on a Wayland. If you again follow the mouse and the tabs, um, you will see that there is a new window, but it does not follow the mouse cursor. It just stays at a fixed position. Um, and also, this fixed position might be might be so that it obscures the other window's tab strip. So if we play this again, you will notice that I will have to let go of the mouse, move the window back down again, and only then I can drag it back into the window. But if I detach it again, we have the same problem. So this is of course not very nice, not a very nice user experience. Um, Let's take a look at why exactly this doesn't work. It, it comes back to the differences that, I, that I've mentioned before. Um, we don't know about the global screen coordinates and we can't control the window position on our own, which means that we can't move the window which contains the detached tabs together with the cursor. And there is a way to make this work by extending the protocol. And actually, there is already one. It's called XCG Top Level Drag, which allows you to move a window during a drag and drop operation, which is exactly what we want. This gives us the same user experience as your regular tab plugging on, for example, Windows. It was initially written by a colleague of mine, Nick Diego, as an extension for the Chrome OS Wayland Compositor. So this is the aforementioned example of a custom downstream protocol as we controlled both the Chrome OS Compositor and also Chrome as the client. And a few months ago, it was upstreamed by a KDE developer. And thus, it is currently only supported by KDE Plasma, although other compositors will hopefully follow soon. And just a few days ago, I think, or weeks, uh, the Chromium support landed. Although there are a few things um, that still need to be improved, so it's not perfect yet, but the UX is still way better than without the extension. The problem is that, of course, as I mentioned before, not all compositors support this protocol extension yet. And even when all, support, uh, all compositors have implemented support, it will take quite some time for all users to update to a version of their compositor that has this support. Uh, especially on LTS distros like Ubuntu, this might take years. And so we still need some kind of fallback tap dragging, um, which, as I've mentioned uh, before, if you're familiar with Firefox, uh, how Firefox does tap dragging, fallback tap dragging is very similar. So we just reuse um, a regular drag and drop with a simple drag icon instead of dragging whole windows around. Um, and then we only create the new window when we actually drop the tabs when we release the mouse. And this sounds quite simple, uh, but uh, as so often the devil lies in the details, because this still violates a lot of assumptions that the regular tab dragging code makes. And it's currently behind a feature flag that you can see on the slide if you want to try it out yourself. Um, this was due to testing issues originally. Um, we weren't able to test it, and I'll explain why in a moment. Um, these testing issues have been resolved by now, and we're currently 
fixing the few remaining bugs that we know of and so we should be able to enable it by default soon. And of course I also have a video of how fallback tab tracking looks. As I mentioned you now don't get a full window while dragging, you just get this drag icon and only when you drop it you get the new window. Um, which again is maybe less impressive than the regular Chrome tab dragging, um, but it makes up for that by working, working well. So let's take a look at the testing issues that I've just mentioned. And let's start by taking a look at how Chromium does its end-to-end -end testing. We have a header file uh, called UI controls, which defines a few functions that you can use to um, inject custom events. These two here are for moving the mouse. The first one just is fire and forget. Uh, and the second one runs a closure once the mouse move has actually been done. And this is, of course, only the Chromium side. We also need a counterpart um, for Wayland on the compositor side to actually implement these custom events that Chromium is requesting. And what we've been doing is we've been using Western Test. Um, Western is a Wayland compositor and Western Test is a protocol extension that was created for Western's internal testing suite, which allows us exactly what we want to do. It um, gives us the possibility to generate compositor events as if they were coming from a real user. And Chromium runs its tests under Western and it slightly tweaked Western test and then used that to implement the UI controls functions that I just showed you. Um, but there are some problems with Western test, mainly because it was created for a completely different purpose. It has very different semantics than the UI controls functions. One example is that there is one function in UI controls which allows you to do a mouse click with keyboard accelerators pressed, so being shift or control. Um, but we need multiple requests using Western test to implement this one call. One to, or maybe multiple to press all the accelerators, then one to press the mouse, one to release the mouse again, and then release all pressed accelerators that weren't pressed before. And then we have some internal waiting for all these requests to complete. Um, and this internal waiting stuff might interfere with other waiting stuff. I won't go into more details. Um, for example, drag and drop also uh, has this internal waiting and thus our drag and drop tests were especially affected by this. Um, also in general, Wayland is an asynchronous protocol. And so it was difficult for, for Chromium to know when all the handling of the different week requests used to implement a UI controls function call had been done. And what we've been doing is we've just been listening for matching input events. Um, but that created some subtle problems leading to, to tests being flaky. So sometimes passing, sometimes failing. Um, and also one problem which mainly or possibly even exclusively affected the tap dragging tests is that it could happen that events would be delivered to the wrong browser window as soon as you had multiple windows open, which happens quite often in tap dragging tests. Um, and I want to take the time to explain why, because I think it's quite interesting. Uh, the reason is, as usual with Wayland Western Test, takes surface local coordinates, not global coordinates. So you give Western Test some coordinates and then a surface that these coordinates are relative to. And internally, Western, of course, is able to translate these coordinates to global screen coordinates. The problem is that on the Chromium side, um, the lower level implementation does not know which window the test that is currently driving the events is targeting. 
So the test is just saying, okay, I have this button maybe. What are the coordinates of this button? These are relative to the window that this button is contained in. And then the test just passes these coordinates down to the lower layers. Um, but this lower layer now needs to find out which surface it needs to pass to Western test together with these coordinates. So which which surface are these coordinates relative to? And the implementation was to just go through all the bounds of all the open windows and check if they contain the target location. Um, but the origin is always at zero, zero because we have surface local coordinates. So usually what happened was uh, you check if the coordinates are inside the first window's bounds. They usually are. So everything was relative to the first window, even though the test might be targeting the second window. Um, and then Weston would translate these coordinates to the wrong coordinates and everything would be going wrong. So how did we solve this problem? Um, and the obvious solution, at least to us, was to ditch Western test and create our own protocol extensions, uh, protocol extension, just one, um, which has the very creative name of UI controls, unstable, um, which has now just one request per UI controls function with the same semantics. And also the server now sends an event back to the client after handling a request so that we know when it has been handled and we can just run a callback when receiving that event instead of blocking and waiting. And to fix the problem with multiple windows, we actually had to change the tests. Um, but luckily, uh, right before um, I realized that this was probably the case that we needed to change the tests, um, a window hint that tests could pass to say, hey, I have these coordinates and they should be inside this window. Um, this window hint was introduced um, because there were similar problems on Mac and we could just reuse that on Wayland as well. Um, also, as a side note, there might be other approaches. For example, there is a libEI for input emulation. Um, or maybe other approaches. So if you have any ideas, if you have any opinions, um, please do reach out uh, and let us know um, if we can maybe improve this further. Um, finally, before I will show you one more video, um, there is one more thing that the tap dragging tests in particular need to work. Um, a few variants need two windows of the same size right next to each other. Um, but of course, this is not easily possible on Wayland because we can't just tell the compositor we want our windows to have these bounds and the compositor does that for us. So we need some way to resize and move windows. Um, and at first, uh, we experimented with a special requests in our UI controls protocol extensions to allow us to do just that resize and move a window. But it turned out to be quite difficult to implement correctly. Um, and so what we finally settled on is to just emulate the mouse events that a user would generate if they were resizing and moving a window, which is way easier, works just fine. Uh, and as you can see in this video, looks quite cool, at least I think. So we have the window that opens here. We first resize it down, we move it to the position, we open the second window, um, Western reuses the same size of the previous window, so we don't actually have to resize it. Let's take another look. So we resize and move the first window, and then we just move the second window right next to it, and now the test can run under the expectations it has. Uh, and using this, uh, all the tests that can pass on Wayland for tap dragging do pass now. Um, there are some tests that can't work because uh, they test that a key press uh, aborts the drag and reverts everything to how it was previously. Uh, and that just doesn't work under Wayland because you cannot receive key events during a drag and drop operation. Um, but aside from that, all tests pass. 
So as I've mentioned before, there are only a few bugs remaining, at least that we know of. Uh, and as soon as they have been fixed, we will enable fallback tab dragging by default. Of course, unless the XGG top level drag extension is available to give you the full user experience. And that's it from me. Thank you uh, if you've made it to the end of this talk. Um, and with any questions or feedback or other stuff, please feel free to reach out using the email shown below.